Hello again and welcome back. So in this video we got two things we need to do. First, we need to fix our crafting screen one last time so that every time we craft an item, it updates our inventory so we can accurately see what we're doing. Second, we're going to make a fire pit so we can actually cook any cookables that we have. So I'm going to hop into my crafting screen. And here's our event construct where we're clearing everything, setting everything back, and then over here we're populating our crafting list table, and down here we're populating our inventory. So, I'm going to grab my inventory panel right here. Well, first I'm going to create a custom event called Refresh Inventory. And with my inventory panel, I'm going to clear the children of it. Then I'm going to find my player row and player column variables, set them both back to zero, and then we can feed this right back into that for loop where we're getting all our information and populating our data table. Or not data table, but you know what I'm saying, the inventory part of it. And let's take a little look-see real quick. So I got my recipes. Oh, phew. well, it probably helps if we actually call that. So I'm going to go into the player blueprint and under the craft item. Let's see, set admission current time. All right, so here at the very end, after we're crafting the item, then we need to call that HUD reference. I'm going to drag this way up, drag you up. I'm going to call that refresh. It's not in my head reference. That's in the crafting screen. So we got to find our handy dandy crafting screen reference. Crafting screen. We'll just grab it out. So at the very end, after we play the animation on our screen, we can call that refresh inventory. I'm going to plug both of these in just like that. Drag this in place just like that. And now when I hop in, learn my recipes. Yeah, now it's updating as we would want. Now, it's not when we pick up items, but that's okay. Because ideally they won't be picking up items with the crafting screen. But what we can do, actually, if 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 and you want to, we can go into that pick up item functionality and just do the same thing. So add set array element. So we'll just grab our crafting screen right here crafting screen and see if it is valid I'm going to drag this way over here because it's going to need to be checked if this is not valid or this is valid you know probably won't be valid if this one's valid but checks and balances are good to have so if it is valid, then we want to do just like that and refresh that inventory. So if we pick something up while we're looking at our crafting menu, it accurately updates. Just like that, that's looking great. All right, so the second thing that we want to do is I want a cooking pit, something to roast, you know, meat over a fire like a caveman. Yeah. So I'm going to... In my interaction system, I've created this folder called crafting system that I didn't use just yet, uh, but you can, if you don't have one, right-click, create a new folder, or wherever you want to store interactables. So I am going to get a copy of my base interactable. I'm going to create a child blueprint of it. This is going to be called my fire pit blueprint. And I'm going to drop it right into there. So I'm going to double-click and open it up, double-click and open it up. And under the item inside the Infinity Blade assets is this fire altar. And it looks great. It works perfect for what I need. 
So that's what I'm going to use. All right, so once that's done, I'm going to highlight the item and I want to add a particle system. Now the particle I'm going to use is part of the, the KOI fire, it's the KOI fireball, kind of like we used for the, uh, the actual fireball. But that's a bit big. Let's set it like 0.5, half that. Three quarters that. That'll be fine. 0.75 across the board, and it looks decent enough. Alright, so I am going to go to its fire pit thingy. I'm going to set that it's not interactable. Don't destroy. Shouldn't need to adjust the item name, but I'm going to anyway just in case. And I'm going to get rid of all of this. And I am going to do an on begin overlap event. So I'm going to highlight my item. Scroll all the way down the details panel. On component begin overlap item. And on component end overlap. Which is the second and third green boxes respectively. So you can pull that out if you need to. Begin overlap, end overlap. Close enough. All right. So from other actor, I'm going to cast to the player blueprint because when we cast, if the object is not the other player, if it's not the player, then it won't work. So if the other actor is the player, then it'll cast. But if it doesn't, then it's fine. So as player, I don't remember if we've set up the near flame. Yes, 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 we have because I already tested that in the last few episodes. Alright, so as player we're going to set near flame. We're going to set that to true on begin overlap. Then I'm going to copy and paste this down to the bottom one. Hook it up and then set it false when we end overlap. Pff, dummy. Drag that fire pit out into the world. And let's take a look see all right. Oh, all right. So it's it, the blue one. The mana potion is invalid right now. But when I get close, now I can boil it or whatever would be, whatever the reason. That's a small little fire pit, but that'll be fine. You can make it whatever you like. Make it as big as you like. And when I end overlap, it's gone. No. Yeah. All right. So it's coming together pretty nicely, I think. So we got our. Crafting notify, the menu's updating. I'm going to change that real quick. I don't like that it says player inventory. I'll just make it say inventory. The player knows they're the player. We don't have to remind them. Okie doke. Hmm. Another thing we could do is we could go ahead and update these. So I'm going to move this to the what? To the side a little bit. And then this canvas panel, I'm going to set its size on the X to 500. Maybe 450. That ought to be fine. How long is this video? so far. Eight minutes. Alright, we got one more thing we can do. One more thing we can do. We need a way to display the character's crafting level and the bar for how close they're getting to the next level. So I'm going to add a text block out here that will just be set to a one for now. I'm not going to size it to content, but I am going to make it about 35 on the font size and italic light. Yeah, I like light better. I'm going to set it to center justification. And I'm going to move it right here. And I'm going to add out a progress bar. 20 on the Y, 300 on the X. And I'll just try to line it up with... Oh. Well, hey, that worked out pretty good. All right, so now the progress. Oh, the way to get rid of that little 
swirly line. Um, is somewhere something that says play animation or don't don't crash please don't crash oh, okay I'm not clicking that again All right, fill a little color ah enable fill animation and then it stops I don't know how to get rid of the actual color difference but there's that so one thing I am going to do is I'm going to click the drop down because I don't want it to draw as an image. I like this rounded box. It looks really nice. So the fill image I'm going to do the same. Draw as rounded box. It just has a nice little, I like it. It looks nice. So for the fill color, I'm thinking like a World of Warcraft purplish. That's not the right kind of purple. It was like a dark purple. You know what? I don't care. That's fine. The point is the functionality, not the way it looks, right? Yeah. All right. So on the crafting thing, let us go into... Well, we need to set that that text block. I'm going to call it crafting LVL, and it is a variable. Now, the progress bar should already be, but we'll just call it crafting bar now for this we can go to the content text bind it create binding let's go into the event graph and right here let's promote the player cast reference to a variable called player ref Compile real quick, and then we can come in here and just drag that out. And then we will get the crafting level and plug that in just like that. So back to the designer to click the progress bar to go to its percentage, and we'll bind that to the player reference, and we'll get crafting XP and craft level up. Now we're going to take the crafting XP and divide it by the level up. Because remember the small amount gets divided by the big amount. So now when I come in here, I'm level one and I've crafted nothing. So, oh, well I meant to, okay, that works, that works too. So now you can see that happened, and then when I click something and craft it, I'm leveling up. Now I'm level 3. And if I, over, or if I go over, then it sets it to the right amount, and can carry on. So that's all well and good. You know, there, I keep saying there's one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, but there is one more thing we could do. There is one more thing we can do. All right, so here at the very end, after we're crafting the recipe, we're learning the items and all that. Let's uh, let's get our crafting screen reference, and what we can do is we can go into our crafting screen, the events right here. I'm going to create a custom event called Refresh Craft List. Now I want some Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. It's weird how just a word can do that. Alright, so in the player blueprint crafting scene, I'm just going to call Refresh Craft List. Right here at the end where I'm playing the animation saying that I've learned new stuff in our Learn Recipes function. Right there so that when the crafting list is open and I level up, then I, I can see the results as it goes. So that's all looking good. The new size of the widget looks good. The level bar looks nice. The inventory's updating. We got a fire pit. And not bad for a quick little video. So, all right. And as far as the crafting system goes, I think that just might be about it. And so in the next one, we might start working on either level design or the fast travel system. So 
I think, um, yeah, let's do the fast travel system real quick, because that'll be like one video, maybe two, and then we can focus really well into the uh, the building, the level, foliage, the whole nine yards. All right, so I will see y'all in a bit. Bye-bye. Okay,